Hello, welcome to Vistas Learning. In Vistas Learning, our aim is to provide quality and affordable education to all. We provide variety of courses from standard 1 to standard 12. Today, I'll be teaching geography. Before we dive into the chapter, let me first introduce myself. My name is Mainu Kalita and today we'll be discussing chapter 8 from class 9 geography book which is Industries of Karnataka. Now let's talk about how industries in Karnataka have defined Karnataka's growth, its economy. Let's see how it came into being. Let's see its growth. So first of all, before uh, discussing what are the major industries that are present in Karnataka, let's see its history a little bit. So what does industry in a country or in a state uh, plays a role? What is its role? Now, industries have been playing a very important role in widening the economy of a state or a region or any place and how it does it decreases the reliance of uh, goods from uh, other countries from foreign countries it decreases our reliance on imported goods it decreases reliance on primary products from uh, foreign countries now, what happened when industries are established in your place, in your state or in your countries, what will happen? You'll be able to produce a lot of materials, a lot of products in your country, in your state itself, in turn increasing the national income or per capita income of your nation. So industries, what it does, it increases our standard of living because it generates job employment opportunities it uh, gives us way to widen our circle uh, markets uh, will be available to us for us to go and buy things which in turn leads to increase or raise the standard of living that we are having so with increase of globalization with urbanization and with the advent of industrialization we have seen the role that industries have been playing now let's just see how industries have played a role in the growth of Karnataka now what happened before Karnataka before the, uh, sorry before independence uh, one of the most uh, important province in Karnataka was the Mysore province Mysore princely state of Mysuru and who were ruling in Mysuru at that time? It was ruled by the Wadir family. In uh, next slide, okay, here on the slide, you can see this is the emblem of the Wadir dynasty that has been ruling uh, over the Mysore province. So the Wadir um, dynasty or the kings, they were very much uh, excited or uh, associated with. Uh, linkage or uh, bringing industrialization in the state of Karnataka. So with the Mysore uh, kings and the interest that the British, uh, that the Britishers or the East India Company showed in the state of Karnataka during that period, Mysuru state uh, was growing in uh, reference uh, to industrialization. So Mysuri from the time of pre-independent state has always uh, remained a model state uh, with respect to industries because of the interest by both the uh, kings or the rulers at, the, at that time that was the Wadia dynasty along with the Britishers or the East India Company. So uh, after independence, or the major uh, industrialization that suit over Karnataka was actually done by a man, uh, a civil engineer known as Sir M. Vishweswarya. Now this person, this civil uh, engineer here, you see, he belonged from a Telugu family, although he was born and brought up, he was more of a Kanadiga because he was born and brought up in Mysuru. And this person, this civil engineer, that is Sir M. V., who was also popularly known as Sir M. V. or Sir Visveshwarya, saw the possibility of uh, having lots of industries in Karnataka. He saw how Karnataka 
can grow as an industrial state. So Viswasarya, because of his uh, foresight, because of his vision, uh, visions that he had, he was a visionary. Uh, what happened? Sir Viswasarya was even knighted by uh, the king or the king of uh, England at that time. Who was that? That was George V was ruling in England and uh, his majesty that time honored Sir Visveshwarya for having visions uh, such as visions of industrialization that would expand the industrial growth of Karnataka. So what Sir M. Visveshwarya did, he first sa said that industrialize or perish. This was the quote given by Sir M. Visveshwarya which meant either now it is the time this is the right time to accept that industrialization has swooped all over the world this is the right time to inculcate industrialization in your state as well so either if you want to see progress if you want to see growth in your state you have to have to bring industries in your state so either bring industries and grow have progress or do away with industries and see your growth getting uh, decreased. So his quote was either industrialized or perished. So this was the visionary who laid the foundation of many, many industries in Karnataka. But the first industry that Vishwasharya formed in Karnataka was the iron and the steel industries. We are going to discuss this further, but let's just see what uh, what sort of industries came in Karnataka first? So, hydroelectric power generation or hydro power generation for the first time was done at Shivana Samudra in 1902. This is a big waterfall where first time hydro power or hydroelectricity power generation was done. In fact, this was the first hydro power in whole of Asia. See. India has always uh, stood up or had a unique position in the world and this uh, Shivana Samudra hydro power generation which was made uh, which was built at Shivana Samudra falls it had again brought India um, front in uh, in front eyes in the front line in the whole world regarding uh, regarding its uh, position of industrialized in reference to industrialization so this hydro power generation was the first power hydro power plant in whole of asia and uh, this power hydro power plant it was generating it was giving electricity to kgf kola gold field as well as to the city of Bengaluru. So when was this uh, established? It was established in the year of 1902. See, this is even pre-independence. Before pre before independence itself, we saw that industries in uh, Karnataka was already set up. Where it was set up? It was set up by Shivana Samudra, where you see this falls is famous for twin waterfalls for your homework go and check which are the twin waterfalls found in shivana samudra and this is the place where the first hydro power plant was set up so after that we see apart from uh, the hydro power plant the other industries that were based in karnataka were made, uh, majorly that of berries and cigarettes so see maybe the Canada uh, people were uh, found uh, fond of smoking from a very early time anyway apart from jokes so the factories uh, apart from the hydro power berries cigarettes and iron and what else is this brass uh, foundries were found in Karnataka brass is a kind of an alloy so uh, let's move forward and let's see after 1902 how the growth of industries began so after 1902, we are taking a great, great leap and just we are moving forward directly to 1923. So after 1920s, many, many modern industries came into being in Karnataka and the industries that uh, were set up, modern industries. Earlier, what happened? Early, even earlier times, 
industries were based in Karnataka, but most of the industries were cottage based industries. It was uh, based in your own houses. It was traditional, conventional methods were used. But after 1923, the industry started to get modernized, meaning equipments, new equipments were brought in, new machines were brought in, the laborers were skilled. So let's see what were the industries. Mainly it was iron and steel. Then you will find soap factories, cotton and silk. You know in Karnataka, a lot of cotton is being grown. We are going to read further about, uh, about in details. We are going to read in details about cotton textile industries in Karnataka, what role it is playing. Apart from that, we are also going to read about paper, cement, sugar industries in Karnataka. But uh, apart from these major industries, uh, there is sandalwood industries also there. Then uh, oil industries are there because in Karnataka, you see a lot of oil, uh, oil seeds are found like Niger seeds, flax seeds, these kinds of oil seeds, the sunflower seeds. Uh, this is the season of sunflower. So a lot of sunflower plantation are also seen in Karnataka. So these are some of the industries that modern industries that were set up after the year of 1923. So let's now talk about what industries or which industries came into being in Karnataka after we got independence, so after the year of 1947. So with the growth of industries, the government of India after independence, it felt that India needs to um, increase or expand its industry. So the government needs to implement certain policies that would widen the market, that would uh, give more flexibility to the businessmen there who are coming to the traders who are coming and investing in various kinds of businesses so the government of india what it did it in, implemented the industrial policy of the central government industrial policy resolution was established in the year 1948 and what it did it gave many policies were set up it widened the market it gave it generated more uh, employment uh, facilities it allowed multinational companies uh, for example like uh, coca-cola then now you will see amazon apple so these multinational companies to come and uh, set up their uh, industries in india as well so the market was widened globalization was done apart from that uh, we saw development of many industries in karnataka itself major industries like hmt bell and pale what are these you can see here hmt is the hindustan machine tools this the headquarters three of these major industries are all found in karnataka the head cow waters are there in the city of Bengaluru. So, uh, talking about Hindustan machine tools, this company has been a leading company producing watches in India. So, next time if you're going out to buy a watch, check who is the company, what company you're buying, you can buy. Uh, so, this is one major company which is Hindustan Machine Tools Limited. See, this is a watch given. Secondly, we have Bharat Electronics or Bell. So, Bharat electronics has been one of the major industries that has been uh, manufacturing a lot of aerospace equipments and instruments then we have pale which is one of the largest uh, uh, power generation equipment manufacturer so all of the headquarters are situated in your state in our state karnataka and in the city of Bengaluru. So with that, we saw watches, then iron and steel, aluminium, then you see in Karnataka, we are blessed. It is an IT hub. A lot of information technology industries are based here, then electronic, biotechnology, parks are being set up in Karnataka. So a lot of industries are being set up here. A market has now been greatly widened. So the government of Karnataka has recognized five regions in Karnataka which are the major industrial industrial region of Karnataka. Now what are these five major industrial region? These are Bengaluru, Kolhar, Tumkaru. This is one region which has got the largest amount or the largest number of industry amongst these. Secondly, we have Balgavi and Dharwar region. Then we have Dakshin Kannada, and Udupi, Bellary, Raichur and Kopal industrial region and lastly we have Mysuru and Mandaya industrial region. So five industrial re uh, regions for you to 
remember for your exams in next classes in class 10 you will study what are the major industrial region that are present in India but for now you'll have to confine it to your own state Karnataka and there are five major in the style region for your exam this is very very important please remember it just for your exams remember this point so Bengaluru Koda Tumkaru I'm once again going to just uh, read it out Belgavi Dharwa, Dakshin Karana Udupi, Belari Raichur Kupal, Mysuru and Mandya you can make one small acronym and remember the uh, names of the industrial region now let's talk about how iron and steel industry came into being in Karnataka who started it and where is it distributed in Karnataka now the, for the first time the iron and steel industry when it was set up in Karnataka where it was done it was done at the Bhadravati in Shivmoga district in 1924 so Bhadravati is the region you will see where a lot two major industries are set up so first is the iron and steel industry so in further uh, when we'll go further we'll see what is the second major industry that is situated at Bhadravati so remember in Karnataka Shivmoga district Bhadravati region iron and steel industries are situated is established so the for when for the first time when this iron and steel industry was established in Shivmonga, what it was known, it was actually called as Mysuru Iron and Steel Industries Limited or MSIL when it was established in the year 1923. Remember, in the previous slide, we uh, studied or we just uh, saw how after 1923, what were the major industries that were being established in Karnataka? It was the iron and steel industries, and where it was situated it was situated at Bhadravati and who took this initiative again the Mysuru royal family done by Krishna Raja Vadaya the fourth he took initiative along with other people like Sir Vishweshwarya they took the initiative and they saw that here and iron and steel industries could be set up now why it was seen why Bhadravati was chosen as a play place in Karnataka where iron and steel industry could be set up because they saw that the area was endowed with the raw materials that were required for establishing the industry. So remember whenever you want to establish one industry you'll have to keep certain points in your mind whether um, there is the supply of uh, raw material is there or not, capital is invested or not, if whether you'll get uh, laborers or not that invest investments are there or not power water supply you'll keep in mind all of these factors and <coughs> i'm sorry and after they saw that all of these factors were being met in bhadravati uh, the raw materials like iron ore deposits were found in the regions of kemanaguru near uh, near kemanagundi uh, in the Baba Budangiri Hills, they saw that this is the place where we can establish the iron and steel industries. Now, coming to Kemanagudi, it is a place, it is a hill station in where it is. Okay, I have not given the picture. Maybe in the next slide, I have given the picture of the Kemanagudi Gundi Hill Station in Baba Budangiri Hills. And where it is, it is found in the district of Chikmangaluru. So, from Chikmangaluru, uh, the raw materials it travels to Shivmoga, Bhadravati and Shivmoga where the iron and steel industries are being set up. So 1923 this step was taken by the Wadia dynasty along with the government along with Vishweshwarya and in however in the year 1989 MSIL Mysuru Iron and Steel Industries were renamed as Vishwesh Surya Iron and Steel Industries and after 1989 this uh, MSIL it came under the authority of sale steel authority of India so for your homework you can see what is the full form of sale commented on the comment box and what it looks after this is an organization which uh, under the government of India, it looks after the steel and uh, iron and steel uh, plants of uh, the public sector plants of India. So, when MSIL was renamed as Vishwasarya Iron and Steel Industry, it came under the authority of sale. All right. Now, let's talk 
how the Vishwasarya iron and steel industry was getting its raw material. So we already talked, it was getting the iron ore was being extracted out from the hill station, meaning um, it's a Kannada term, it means a red soil uh, pit. So from this hills, uh, what we got from Chikmagalur districts, we got, okay, here is the picture of hill station of Kiamanagundi, where the iron ore was being extracted out. Now, apart, when you're making steel, apart from iron, you need other raw materials such as lime you need, for running the industry you need water and then manganese is also needed. And from where these are being supplied, lime was being supplied from Bandiguda, from Shivmuga itself, that water from the Bhadra river. Now, this is one of the holiest river that flows in South Karnataka. Now, Bhadra river provides water for the Vishwasarya iron and steel industries and manganese was being provided by Sandur area. Remember, we have studied in mineral uh, and power resources. So, from Sandur area, Ballari, manganese were being provided. So, this is a small uh, in small points, very briefly, it is given from where the supply of raw material is being done for the iron and steel industries. It has been color coordinated for your better understanding. So I hope you will remember iron ore, Kemagudi, lime, Bal Bandiguda, water, Bhadra river, manganese, Sandur area from Ballari district. So before what happened, when iron was being produced uh, or extracted out uh, from uh, this uh, plant, from Vishwasha Iron and Steel plant, they were using blast furnace. In the beginning, firewood was used for the blast furnace. When the iron was being smelted, firewood, see, from the forest, they were collecting timber, they were collecting wood, and for smelting of iron for heat generation, what they were using? They were using firewood. But after the Sharavati hydropower, again here you will see one more hydropower, uh, Hydel power plant was uh, built and where it was built now, it was built at the Sharavati river. Now see, Sharavati river, I hope you have already heard about Sharavati river because this river, Sharavati falls, this is the river from where the famous Jog waterfalls is found. So this is a picture of Sharavati river and you can see Jog falls is there in the Sharavati river. So a hydropower power plant was set up in the Sharavati river for the purpose of generating, uh, for the purpose of smelting of iron in the blast furnace. So generating station was established and hydroelectricity was being used in the blast furnace to produce the iron and steel. So a special kind of wrought iron, pig iron were being produced in the Vishwasharya iron and steel industry. So at present, see here I've already mentioned a special variety of steel and pig iron being are being produced. So pig iron is a kind of crude form of iron where the iron is smelted in the blast furnace. So apart from the so we talked about Mysuru and Iron Steel uh, Company, which was renamed as Vishwasharya Iron and Steel Plant. Apart from that, one of the major private sector own uh, iron and steel uh, plant that is based in your state is the Jindal Vijay Nagara Steel Limited, about which we have already discussed in the mineral and power resources. So this is also one of the major private sector. Remember Vishwasharya Iron and Steel, it was before private sector, then in the year 1989, uh, Sale Authority of India it took over uh, the Vishwasharya Iron and Steel industry of uh, Karnataka. But this one of the most important private sector iron and steel industry in Karnataka is the Jindal Vijayanagara Steel Limited. And when it was established, the year is 2001 at Turangal in Ballari district using the latest forex technology. Now, this is like in the earlier cases, we saw earlier firewood was used for the smelting of iron in the blast furnace. Then uh, they started to use the um, hydropower electricity. Here in Jindal, Vijayanagara and Steel Limited, they used a special kind of technology called Corex technology was used. Now, let's not go, let's not go deep into the subject what Corex technology uh, or how it is done. For, uh, for the time being for your class, let's just understand that this is a new kind of technology which was being used by the Jindal Vijayanagar Steel Limited for uh, producing or extraction of their iron or uh, establishment of their iron and steel plant. 
So moving forward, we have discussed very nicely about iron and steel industries. We saw how Vishwasharya and industries, a civil engineer, saw the vision of establishing iron and steel industry. Now let's just talk about cotton industries in Karnataka. Now Karnataka, you know, is the part of peninsula India of Deccan Plateau where it is uh, rich in black soil. So because of uh, because the soil here is black soil or also known as black cotton soil it is rich in minerals it is very good for cultivation of cotton plants so a lot of cotton plant cultivation is being done in Karnataka now cotton industry is one of the major agro-based industry not just of Karnataka but of India also it is one of the major textile industry and one of the modern textile industry how it is one of the modern or one of the most important industry in India because India has been producing cotton from a very very long time ago from BC onwards India has been producing cotton in fact Indian cotton was so famous all over the world it was being exported out to European countries to Persia to Europe uh, to Europe so a lot of countries were importing cotton from uh, India so Cotton industries has always played a major role in expanding India's economy. And in Karnataka, a lot of cotton industries are being set up. In fact, presently there are 44 cotton mills in the state. So the first time, for the first time when the cotton mills were set up in Karnataka, it was the MSK cotton mill, which was set up in where Kalaburgi or Gulburga in the year 1884. See? almost uh, um, 60 to 70 years before that of uh, independence so the first modern cotton mill so before that also cotton industries already existed in India in Karnataka but the modern industry for the first time when it was set up it was set up at Kalaburgi Puragi uh, in the year of 1884 so here it is written modern cotton mills at the end of 19th century so uh, for your uh, understanding, let me give you one uh, interesting way of remembering the dates or understanding how the century thing works. Suppose, uh, let me draw it here. Where is the pen? Here it is. Suppose now it is the, where did it go? Okay, I'll take there. Now it is what? It is 21st century, right? Remember, whichever century we are talking about, the years, uh, the cumulative year will be in 2000. So it is 2022, so the century is 21st century. If it will be to, uh, 22nd century, the years will be what? It will be 2001 something, suppose 01, right? I hope this is clear. So, here on the slide, it is mentioned that uh, cotton industries, modern cotton industries came into being in Karnataka in the 19th century. So, 1 uh, plus 19, therefore the year must be in the 1800s. So, in the 1884, the modern cotton mill, MSK cotton mill was being set up in Karnataka. Apart from that, that some of the major cotton mills that are found in Karnataka, two of them are in, in Bengaluru itself. You can go and search if you want to know more about these mills, you can even visit it. These are the Bini mills and the Minerva mills in Bengaluru. Then we have KR mill of Mysuru. This is a very, very uh, old cotton mill. Then cotton mills of Davangade. Now, Davangade as a district is very much known for its textile industries. A lot of textiles are present in Davangade. In fact, for cotton, it is producing so much of cotton textile that it is known as the Manchester of Karnataka. Manchester is what? It is a place in UK. It was the place where cotton were being, first cotton industries were being set up, modern cotton in industries were being set up. So Manchester in UK was also known as the Cottonopolis where cotton industries were set up. So in Karnataka, which is the place? It is Davangare, which is known as the Manchester of Karnataka. If you look in case of India in your textbooks, it is given Mumbai is the Manchester of India. But now the statistics have changed, in fact, and it is, in fact, Ahmedabad, which is the Manchester of India. So in 
Manchester of India, UK, uh, Manchester of the world, which is in Manchester, UK, which is the cottonopolis of the world. Then for India, it is now statistically Ahmedabad. Then for South India, it is Coimbatore. But if you talk about Karnataka for your exams, for your syllabus, remember it is Manchester of Karnataka. And which is that page? It is Tavan Gade. So after independence, cotton mills were set up in Northern Medan. That means the Northern Plains of Karnataka. A lot of cotton mills were set up in the Northern Medan where cotton was being widely grown. I hope some of you must have also visited cotton uh, fields. You have seen how cotton uh, looks like. See here on the slide, you can see how a cotton flower looks like. It is uh, the flowers. I know uh, how many of you have seen cotton flowers. It is very beautiful. It is uh, yellow in color. And um, there are different, even uh, there are varieties of cotton that are available. So this is a picture of a skilled laborer who is working in a cotton uh, Field. So let's move forward and see what else is there. So we have discussed about Davangere and uh, so now what happened a lot of cotton industries are being closed down in Karnataka. So because we see for establishment of any industries there is a need of supply of uh, we have uh, I have already mentioned about supply of raw materials there has to be water power skilled laborers machines has to be there. So with industrialization with places developed places where more of uh, machines and modern industries are there maybe places in Karnataka it is lacking such kind of resources because of shortage of cotton that means uh, maybe uh, some other plantation has taken over cotton so the raw material is absent or the machines are obsolete means it is old it is not new and then lack of electricity power generation is not there then increasing production cost the power has to put in a lot of uh, investment or money to increase its market and stiff competition there's a lot of competition because a lot of places are growing cotton um, apart from uh, india china is a major producer of cotton then we talk about manchester so there the competition is very stiff so because of these factors the cotton industries were being getting closed in Karnataka. What is it? Shortage of cotton, meaning there was no supply of raw materials. Obsolete machines, meaning traditional and conventional machines are there. New machines or modern machines were not introduced. Lack of electricity supply because to run any industries, you need power, you need water, you need power generation. So these, if there is obsolete machines, to run the even if you brought in a new modern machine to run these modern machines you do not have the electricity then the capital and the money invest uh, investment is very large so because of these factors the cotton industries started to get shut down in Karnataka however the government came up with certain policies to help re-establish these textile industries in Karnataka and what was this uh, policy it was the swavarna textile policy 2008 to 2013 see so this is a what five year plan five year plan from 2008 to 13. So this was a five-year plan policy that was introduced by the government which was known as Sovereign Textile Policy to re-establish to ensure that these industries do not uh, get shut down further so that these industries remain established in the place as cotton industries has been playing a major role in the economy of the state. So under this Sovereign textile policy what happened programs like uh, Finnish goods parks were introduced so Finnish good parks where it was introduced these parks were introduced in 11 district districts of Karnataka so what was the purpose of this sovereign textile policy as I've already said it was to make and it was to uh, make ensure that there is a balanced market that the farmers are able to sow the seeds of cotton they are able to invest in they are able to and if they are growing cotton they are able to get a 
minimum support price for their products which were being produced by them so what it does the purpose is to achieve balance higher and sustainable growth in the entire textile value chain from fiber to finished products with emphasis on the balanced regional developments that means the government wanted to make sure that from growing from sowing seeds to the uh, final product the final textile whosoever is involved in the process from the farmer to the uh, textile industries everyone is getting a amount of everyone is generating an amount of revenue or amount of money and amount of income so it checks if the market is balanced or not apart from that uh, it also may ensure that the group uh, that the goods or the products the cotton products uh, raw materials whether raw materials or the finished textile products were being sent out to other countries for export businesses so that the government as well as the farmers as well as the industries cotton industries could benefit from it so under this uh, program you see i think you have understood the purpose of the program why the swavarna policy was introduced because of certain uh, setback in the cotton industry so after so after the establishment or coming introduction of swavarna textile policy it made sure that these aims these purposes were fulfilled and finish goods parks were established in 11 districts where people could come they could buy they could see what are the varieties of textile made of cotton were made they could check the market was wide for other people from other different places can come and see and buy in these markets this was just to expand the market of cotton to see whether uh, the people associated with the cotton textile industries were benefiting were getting profits or not so Karnataka ranks second in the country with regard to export of textile. For your homework, you'll have to know which is the first uh, state which uh, in regards to export of textile. But Karnataka, as we are reading about Karnataka, Karnataka ranks about second. And about the finished goods products, apart from the 11 districts, where it is found, the major places, districts where it is found is Duda, Balapur, Anakel, Balgavi, Mysuru and Ramanagar. These are the places where the finished goods parks are found majorly. With this, we have come to an end of cotton textile and now let's discuss about sugar industry. Now, what comes to your mind when you talk about sugar industry? Candies, chocolates, this comes to your mind, right? When you talk about sugar industry. So, let's just see, uh, know a little more, a little about the history of sugar industry, how it was introduced in Karnataka. Now, this person, Sir Francis Buckingham, later one more title, Hamilton was added to his name. So, anyway, Sir Francis Buckingham, here a picture is given. This person uh, was from uh, Scotland. So he was a geographer, he was a botanist, he was a zoologist. So this person, he came to India, this European person, and he uh, started to write a lot about the Indian uh, land. In fact, he also wrote about Mysuru. Uh, Mysuru, there's a long, um, there's a good uh, paper, a book uh, written by Sir Francis Buckning about Mysuru and in his writings you will um, you will find that he has mentioned about sugar industries that were present in Karnataka from where in the 19th centuries in the 1800s onwards the sugar industries were present in Karnataka and who mentioned it for the first who mentioned it in writing? It was Sir Francis Buckingham from Scotland, a geographer, a zoologist, a botanist who came and write about the sugar industries in Karnataka. And he said that these towns, Pallavi, Shina, what it is? Shiranga Patna and Chika Balapura, these towns were producing sugar in 1847, in 19th century, 1847. And they were producing a lot of sugar. In fact, these places won prizes in none exhibition. So, in so these farmers at that time onwards, from that time onwards, they were selling their products to European countries. In fact, the value was so good, the product was so good, they even won prizes. But apart from that, when was the modern sugar industries was set up? It was first for the first time the modern sugar industries was set up in. Mysuru, Mysuru Sugar Company, or in short, it was also known as My Sugar. So, My Sugar was set up in Mysuru in the year of 1933. And uh, until I knew that was the only factory in the state. See, till 
So this person, when Sangha Pansit Bhaktam mentioned about sugar industries in the places, these industries were again um, aggravated and they were very localized. So after the, when the modern industry was first set up in the year 1933, again in Mysuru, this industry was the only modern industry which was set up in Karnataka until the year of 1951. After that, we now know that in Karnataka, Mandya district is known as the sugar district, sugar city, where a lot of cotton is, uh, sorry, uh, what is it? Sugar is being produced. A lot of sugar industries are present in Mandya district. So sugar industries, again, is an agro-based industry. It is done in agriculture land. It needs a lot of skilled laborers because for growing, for plantation of sugar, uh, you need to make ensure that water irrigation facilities is there, water is being supplied. So skilled labor is one of the important factor which is needed for uh, sugar cane plantation. So it production, what else it requires? It requires humid climate, power supply, local market transport system. And I will write one more point over here, which is... Uh, power supply and uh, here I will water provided it was provided water is also needed which is provided by irrigation channels because a lot of dams are produced in this region so via irrigation channel water has been provided in these industries so sugar city in Karnataka as I've already said is Mandya and district is Belgavi so important for your exams sugar city is Mandya in fact if you go and visit Mandya you will see a lot of sugar industries are there so 47 of sugar industry. Now modern, modern sugar industries in Karnataka, what is the number? 47. In cotton we saw what was the number? 44 mills with, uh, present in Karnataka. In case of sugar, it is 47. So Karnataka stands third in the rank of sugar production in the country. So third, imagine. For cotton, it was second. And for uh, sugar, it is third in the production of sugar. So let's move forward and check where the sugar industries are found. Where it is found, see, I have discussed, it is found in a catchment area. All right, so the catchment areas of Kaveri, Krishna and Tunga Bhadra River. So these are the major rivers, catchment areas of the river where sugar industries are done. So why along the catchment area, the area where the river water comes and gets uh, deposited kind of area or the irrigation canals are present? because this industry requires abundance of water. So apart from that, the districts that are involved in, what happened? Okay, this is not working. Just give me a second, okay? Let me just adjust. This is not changing. Anyway, the districts that were involved in the production of sugar industries are Belgavi, Bagalgod, Mandya, Mysuru, Bidar, Vijayapura, Kalaburgi, uh, Ballari, Devanagari districts. These are also some of the significant industries of sugar. So, apart from the sugar, uh, so these sugar cane, uh, sugar industries, what is its raw material? Its raw material is sugar cane. So, apart from sugar, the sugar cane will also generate some byproducts. And what are, what are the byproducts? It is bagasses and molasses. So molasses are what? These are uncrystallized sugar syrup. If you see, if you go in the sugar industry, you will find that some uncrystallized uh, uh, sugar syrup, brown in color. It is a little uh, brown and goldenish in, in color. So these molasses is a byproduct of sugar industry. This molasses, why it is used, this uncrystallized sugar syrup is used for production of or for making of alcoholic drink. Whereas bagasse or bagasses, howsoever you pronounce it, this is what, so I know uh, you all must have gone out and during summers you go out and drink half sugar cane juices. So you see that person who gives you sugar cane, he, uh, what he does, he, uh, there's an, uh, machine sugar cane machine he puts in the sugar cane and then rotates its water so after the sugar is uh, after the sugar juice has been extracted from the canes there is a waste of the cane which is being uh, thrown away now this the waste of the sugar cane after extraction of the juice is known as bagasin and this uh, is a byproduct of sugar industry which has also got its uses. Why? Where it is used? Bagasses is used for manufacture of 
paper it has been used as a raw material in the paper industries apart from that nowadays it has also been used as a biofuel you will read in your biology lessons what are biofuels so for remember there are two byproducts of sugar which is vagases and molasses vagases for paper industries we'll read it uh, study here and molasses for alcohol industry with this we have come to an end of sugar industries now let's just talk about paper industries now we have talked about two agro based industry one mineral based industry which is iron and steel industry now we are going to read about one forest based industry which is the paper industry now why this industry is important because earlier it was thought that paper the amount of paper which is used in a country is proportional to the literacy rate or education value of that country however now it has changed with coming of online mode of education now where paper are being used you already know printing for writing purposes for propagation of cultures or variety of uses you know where paper is being used raw materials it can be eucalyptus trees bamboo bagasses as i've already mentioned and cloth rag waste there are certain kinds of even grasses which are used as a raw material in paper industries now for paper industries there is also a lot of uh, other factors which uh, determines the establishment of paper industries so the first paper industry was set up in mysuru paper mill limited which was set, set up there it was set up in bhadravati remember we re read earlier in bhadravati what was situated one was the iron and meal industry sorry iron and steel industry and the second major industry that is situated in badravati is the paper mill industry in the year 1936 for your exams you might have to remember the dates the rank of your state in, in reference to the industry so remember it was the mysuru paper mill limited which was established in the year 1936 so what is it a private company uh, west coast paper mill was then started at dandali dandali is a place in karnataka which is known for its natural wildlife vegetation uh, wildlife sanctuary is present so the raw material bamboo eucalyptus we have studied uh, tree pulp uh, from the nearby forests from the kali river and electricity from jog is supplied to this mill so for this mill where uh, what is the raw material used here it is used bamboo, bamboo and eucalyptus trees apart from that other raw materials are also there but this paper mill is focusing on bamboo and eucalyptus majorly and it uses kali river for water supply in case of mysuru paper mill it was using bhadravati uh, it was established at bhadravati so kali river why water is needed in paper industries you can watch some videos or you can visit some paper industries in your state itself you see uh, these um, raw materials they uh, first at first when they are being made they are being submerged in water then a lot of chemicals are being added to degrade the uh, uh, bio material so a lot of water is run not just the instruments but to also uh, make the papers in the initial processes and energy is being supplied from jog waterfalls and where was it situated where is it situated we have already studied in the sharavati river so major river major paper mills in the state is at nanjagut krishna raja nagas satyagala uh, mundagod Muni, uh, munirabad Yadur and Bengaluru, these are the places and Karnataka, the position of Karnataka in terms of paper industries is fourth. So this is also important, the rank, which, what is the position? It is fourth. So with this, now let's see about cement industry. So cement industries is also one of the major industries in the state of Karnataka. So with uh, why it is one of the major industries of Karnataka? Because we see Karnataka as a state uh, uh, has been growing in uh, terms of uh, modernization in terms of urbanization a lot of industries are being set up and to set up these industries to connect these industries with other places what is being done a lot of construction has been done and these construction for these construction what is being needed cement is being needed for cement for production of cement you need different raw materials you need limestone which consists of calcium carbonate then you need gypsum which consists again of calcium sulfate de uh, dehydro then dihydrogen uh, gypsum this is the formula calcium sulfate and dihydrogen is there then bauxite is bauxite is needed bauxite remember we studied in uh, aluminium on bauxite 
So these are the raw materials that are required for establishment of cement industries and all of these raw materials fortunately are present in abundance in Karnataka and therefore Karnataka has seen cement industries being established. But apart from these raw material, there is one more raw material that is required for establishing of cement, for making of cement industries. That is what it is, coal. Now, where from coal is imported? It is imported from other states nearby. So, what is it? Availability of water, sand, transport, electricity supply, clay, white market are some of the factors which has made sure. So water is there in Karnataka, a lot of irrigation channels as I've mentioned, a lot of dams are there, a lot of rivers. These have made sure that transport facilities are good over here, then market is good. So these factors have made sure that Karnataka uh, see a growth of uh, cement industries. In fact, it produces, Karnataka as a state produces 8% of the total cement that has been produced in the entire uh, nation, entire country of India. So what is the annual production of cement? It is 121 lakh tons. So let's start and uh, let's read where was the first cement factory situated. It was again situated at Adravati in the year 1939. So we studied iron and steel industries, uh, then about uh, sugar industry, paper industry and now about uh, cement industries at Bhadravati. Apart from that, Bagalpur, Amasandra of Tumkuru districts and Shahabad of Kalaburgi districts are also regions where cement industries are present. Now with this, we have come to an end of the last industry, which is the IT industry, information industry or the knowledge based industry. You know, Karnataka has been endowed with a lot of IT hubs, a lot of information technology. In fact, you know how Bengaluru is the IT hub of the country. A lot of software companies are present in Bengaluru. Um, so Bengaluru is in fact known as the Silicon Valley of India. What it is? ITBT, that means Information Technology and Biological, Biotechnological uh, Parks in, uh, in India are found in uh, Bengaluru. So what it is known? It is known as the Silicon Valley of India. And in the uh, world, which is the Silicon Valley, it is present in um, California, USA. So Bengaluru is the Silicon Valley because a lot of information IT hubs are present here, a lot of software and hardware uh, industries are present. In fact, Bengaluru is amongst the world's top 10 major IT hubs. So it has how many IT hubs? Two, uh, 1200 IT hubs are present here. Which So these IT hubs, these are what they are doing. They are generating a lot of employment opportunities and one of the most uh, one of the advantage of IT industries is that it doesn't depend on any kind of raw material so what you need for IT industries the major raw material or requisite for IT industries is actually the intellectual power or intelligence of humans so the more the human is intelligent more um, humans are uh, uh, intellectual the IT industries will get expanded. So you see in foreign countries, a lot of Indians are being uh, recruited for purpose of uh, for expanding their IT sectors because Indians are uh, quite uh, intelligent in terms of software building. So what are the factors for building of IT is good climate so that you can sit in your office area, you have good conditions um, so that the climate doesn't uh, hamper you with your working, you can sit and work for hours. So the good, good climate also determines if IT industries can be set up in that area or not. See, as Bangalore has got a very good climate, it, it has got moderate climate, neither very hot, it's not very extreme. So a lot of IT companies, have been set up a lot of people migrate to Bengaluru for its good climate. Apart from that, you'll have to make sure that electricity supply is there or not. Because to run any instrument, to run your computers, to your run your uh, instruments, laptops, you need electricity. So electricity power is one of the major, major important factor that uh, looks after the establishment of IT factor. Then technical experts, as I talked about intelligence and intellectual power has to be there. Uh, the, People who are involved in the IT factor, the white collar job people, they have to know the technicalities that are involved in the industry. So apart from that, you need what? You need capital, you need financial assistance because these industries demand a lot of uh, 
modern machines, modern instruments. And then we have again the vast market, the market, market facilities has to be there if you are producing any kind of product, whether software, hardware or any other product, you need to know if the market is there or not, if the market is wide or not, and then you need the infrastructure. So Bengaluru or Karnataka as a place has got a lot of IT companies, we see Infosys, Wipro, these are all present in Bengaluru and apart from Bengaluru, the other IT hubs in Karnataka is in Hubli, Mysuru, Kalaburugi, Shivmunga, Tumkuru and Mangaluru. So with this, we have covered in a very interesting manner the entire chapter of industries of Karnataka. I hope you have enjoyed this chapter with me. I've tried to make it very industries, uh, interesting. For more of geography classes, you can log into our website, which is recently being launched. So for more of geography classes, please come and join in Vistas Learning. Till then, take care. Bye for today.